comes to social emotional learning interventions. So um, social emotional learning is basically just life skills, right? Being able to teach children and adults really for that matter, um, self-awareness, being able to establish and understand who you are, um, the better you can understand who you are, um, the better you can then socialize, have relationships, have goal-directed behavior, have optimistic thinking, just really set yourself up for success. Um, so I do a lot of that um, in the schools um, here in Tulsa. Um, and one of the things I really do push social emotional learning when it comes to behavior, um, behavior systems, I think that's the, um, that's the way to really break the pipeline to jail um, systems that we have in our schools right now. Too much of our behavior is just, we react to it and the schools just react to students' behavior. And I think social emotional learning gives us a pathway to really be responsive and then also be proactive to supporting kids in, in those spaces. Mm. Okay. That's what's up. Mm. Yeah, point over thinking. Yeah, I, you know, that's, you said what? Point over thinking. That's us. You know what I'm saying? And how is the kids? How, how do you like working with the kids? I mean, I love working with the kids. I'm very committed. Um, I'm very committed to our community, to our children. Yeah. Um, I'm not from Tulsa, but definitely, um, I definitely, for me, it's the north side of Tulsa that has my heart. It's the part of Tulsa that, for me, represents mostly and feel I feel most connected because it feels and um, reminds me of like where I'm from back home in Chicago. And so for me, it's definitely, um, I have a heart for our kids, um, our black and brown kids in poverty. Um, and so that's where my heart is. And so I definitely um, love working in those spaces um, with them and showing up into the space to advocate for them um, and, and show up into the space of social emotional learning um, when it comes to behavior and really overall education at this point um, where it is now, especially with uh, all that's going on in the world. So yeah, definitely. Hmm. let me ask you this. So like with the pandemic, uh, going on, you have a lot of kids that's, you know, doing online or distance learning, and then there are some kids that are returning back to school in person. How would they be able to use social and emotional learning uh, versus being at home versus, you know, being at school? How do they, I guess, balance the two? Does that make sense? How would they, or what would you suggest, I guess? I mean, I really don't think social emotional learning is like separate. I think that's just overall, like, just strategies. I think that's just overall life, right? being able to be self-aware, being able to um, have self-management, manage your own emotions, um, being able to be aware of the people around you, what that looks like when you interact with them, um, building relationship skills. I think right now in this time, I think it's definitely um, social emotional learning. And also, it's just not about kids. It's overall. It's social emotional learning for people, right? Um, adults, actually, what I'm learning is that probably need it more than kids these days, <laughs> real talk. But real, real talk, just being in this space, being able to understand like how you're being affected, being able to sit with your feelings and being able to say, hey, I feel this way about this, being able to own how you feel um, in spaces. I think um, removing that taboo of talking about our feelings, right? Like really coming up with a space of talking about our feelings amongst each other as adults, but also um, I think bringing that space for children too often that, you know, children should be seen and not heard, or we often think children, you know, like we forget that they are really being affected by everything around us as well in their own world and their own ways. And too often adults, we get consumed with our lives what, and we forget that. What's the, so um, I think, what's the age, not to really cut you off, but what's the age group? That I work with? Yeah. So currently my, um, the age I focus on is early childhood. So that's definitely birth through third grade. Um, but okay. I, I've taught all the way up to middle school, so and I'm an advocate for all children. So I consider myself a advocate or protector of children to say, you know, that's my superhero okay. power. <laughs> for sure, definitely. Is it, is it, is it, have you worked with anyone either after that, you know what I'm saying, after third grade, like a little bit older, or mm -hmm. is, it, is it usually cut off at third grade? And that, Nope. So I'm, I would talk six. I taught six and seven grade math um, for a year mm -hmm. um, in my career. But most of most of my career has been um, early childhood development. I have a degree in early child development, and I'm currently um, working toward my doctorate right now in early childhood development. I feel like there's a lot of inequalities when it comes to our children, especially our babies. Um, when it comes to like our preventative and what we're doing 
beforehand when it comes to education, when it comes to social emotional learning. And so I'm definitely in a space to want to um, push that space and um, be a voice in that space to really advocate and, and bring awareness to the inequality that, that our kids do experience when it comes to um, early childhood education. So um, I guess I, I want to ask you, like, when you started, you started from my mindset, did you, um, I guess, go through any ups or downs, like trying to start the start of mindset? Or what was that like? Or could you walk us through that as far as? Um, yeah, I think, thing. well, I think for me, I left the early childhood world, um, which is a very separate entity. It's still education, but um, I left the early childhood world after 10 years, and I transitioned into the public charter school world, which definitely was a big educational culture shock for me. Um, what I've learned and what I was used to how we um, just do curriculum, we integrate curriculum, we make sure there's music, um, Arts are, are integrated into, into curriculum. Children are given a voice. Children are given autonomy. They're part of the curriculum and considered. Um, when I came to public school, it just became so black and white, pen to pa paper to pencil, um, test driven, um, academic outcomes, and it just left no room for children to truly be children in order to really grow into who they are. We took away the value of um, I guess in a sense for me, public education basically is like, we just sit there and we tell kids who they should be and how they should be, opposed to being a part of their process of them showing us who they are and us supporting them and growing them on who they are through their strengths. Um, and I think when I came to public school, it was more about what your weaknesses are. We're focused on that because that's what we need to grow. And I'm definitely a strength-based um, teacher and a strength-based leader, meaning that I really feel like it's focusing on what you're good at, um, continue to empower that. And when you do that, then your things that you're not so great at will, on their own, begin to grow because you're growing your strengths anyway. So for me, that was a big, I had a big disconnect when I first came. Um, to the public school world, which really moved me to really start restorative mindset, to really bring awareness to the importance of social emotional learning when it came to be the responses to behavior. I think for me, that was the biggest one, how we respond to our babies. Now, remember, I was working with kids um, pre-K through third grade in my building, and the way we just respond to behavior would just like blew my mind. These are babies, right? They're growing. They're supposed to make mistakes. You can't grow if you don't make mistakes right so and the way we respond to it is just like detention um suspension and we're talking about babies they're literally new to life and the way we're responding to them is that they've been around for a long time ex having expectations for little children that we don't we can't even keep for ourselves as adults but we're expecting children to show up to the space and get it right the first time if you don't you're out of school which ultimately affects their academics um, and again, when we're dealing with kids who are exposed to a lot of poverty and, and trauma, um, when they show up to school, they're not really thinking about schoolwork, right? They got other things. I mean, hey. half the adults, they come to work, ain't thinking about work. I know, you know? I wasn't. I was thinking about what hip-hop album is coming out. <laughs> I wasn't. But, then, but see, but I, with but that, I, right? Yeah. You're thinking about hip hop albums, but we got kids that's coming to school because they just got done before they before they just got out the building, before they got out the car, they daddy just smacked their mama mm. and this is the norm for them. We got kids coming to school that's hungry, yeah. right? If your basic needs are not met, right? If your basic needs are not met, your brain goes into survivor mode. Yeah. And when you're in survivor mode, you just it's survivor of the fittest at that point and they don't they they're not in that space. And if we don't first make sure and ensure that children feel safe and that they are um, ready to learn, then it doesn't matter how great the curriculum, it doesn't matter how great your lesson is or how great of a teacher you are, um, the kids will not be ready. Mm -hmm. If they hungry, they're not gonna be ready. If they just can't, if they just, I mean, just imagine if you just got off a roller coaster that was a crazy roller coaster ride, and then literally when you get off of that roller coaster, you go straight into a meeting with your peers and you're expected to like produce, I mean, your adrenaline is going, you're all over the place. Right. But yet we expect kids you know what I'm saying? Who probably just seen their parents get arrested, a parent get arrested last night, or I mean, just real life it's stuff crazy. that happens. Just real life stuff. That's and wild. we expect our children to show up at school and just produce results of test scores and test scores. That's just, to me, it's just, it's, it's whack. Crazy, yeah. <laughs> hey, that's, yeah, I mean, you know, that's a hard, 
you know, that's a hard job that you get that you're working with, definitely. So, you listen, you wait. So you say you from the South Side of Chicago. You yeah, like the suburbs. so you listen to hip hop, huh? I mean, I listen to music. <laughs> <laughs> I like music in general, but yeah, I'm definitely well, army. Look, we gonna switch it up to some some shows. What we ask on the show? What, what's give us your top? What 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 do you want? What you want to say, friend? You want to ask at the top? Uh, just, just just give us your uh, top five classic yeah. rap or you know uh, R and B albums. Hmm. So I read. Wait, hold on. You said top what? Uh, red. Five classic albums. It could be either R and B or rap. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Well, I'm just gonna give you. I really don't really. I really don't. Just music in general. You know. I really don't move in albums, but I okay. do move in individual songs and experiences. Top five. So top five. Quit. I'm gonna give you my top five. Um, I'm also, you know, I'm a helpless romantic. I love love. I believe in the power of love. I believe it is the strongest form of energy on this earth. Um, With that being said, I'm going to give you my top five uh, love songs, um, love song collaborations. Okay. So my, um, I'm going to start with All I Need with Mary J and Meth. Definitely a classic love song, Uh-oh. the love story. That's kind of dope. That love okay. story. Is dope. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, second is uh, Mariah Carey and Bone. Um, when they threw down that breakdown collabo. Mm-hmm. Yes, definitely. Um, definitely another classic for me. Um, my girl Eve and Alicia Keys when they did that um, Gangsta Loving. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely, definitely one of my favorite mm-hmm. um, love song collabos. Um, what's that? That's three my, or two? That's three. three. Yep. Um, Nas and um Amy Whitehouse that cherry wine. Y'all probably be sleeping on that mm. one, so go ahead and YouTube it after this and check it out. Definitely. Um, definitely. Left hook, right hook, fellas. She said YouTube. Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> But definitely um, that cherry wine though definitely um the the love story in that um definitely uh resonates. Mm. It's definitely a dope love story. And my number one top favorite Uh-oh. of all times literally has been my ringtone for <laughs> literally since it came out been changing songs since the flip phone is you got me with the roots and Erica Badu. Mm. Dope, like the music. The, I mean, that song holistically is just mm. without the lyrics. It's still that music. We just it it takes you there. And when you throw the lyrics on and throw the story on there, it's just the dopest, most romantic love song of all time. Mm. So there you. Go. That was hot. Okay, I put you gotta give us an honorable honorable mention from Chicago. You didn't give us a Chicago artist. <sighs> I guess that would be if I had to do a collabo from it would be uh that Mary J in common. Mm. Mary J in common. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, that was dope yeah. too. Yep. That was dope. That was a really dope album. But that I'm Love trying to think of what song coming. that was. Um, um that circus album, I think. Uh the one where he kinda he did a little bit. Is that like close to you? Uh-huh. Come close to Come closer, you. close to you. Yeah. Yeah. When he was doing, like, he had the girl who was deaf, I guess. Yeah, that's that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mhm. That joint was hot. I forgot oh, what yeah. the album. Though. I love collabos. Those are my favorite. Um, when um hip hop and R and B come together, there's nothing like it, baby. Nothing like it. So man, let's uh get into this uh road to the Super Bowl. Wait, wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. I'm curious. What's, why don't you why don't y'all give me each give me a collabo love song R and B in R and B and hip hop? Let's oh, I you got. Valley. You don't want to ask me. You don't want to ask me. I got. I already I got. Albums, I already got mine. Song. I know mine. Okay. What is? Wait. Does it have to be? It's just. It's just a collab song, right? It's R and B and hip hop love song. Now you stop. But does it gotta be rap though? I mean, whatever okay. you consider hip hop to be. I mean, I would prefer it to be have some bars in it. Yes, sir. I. But he got bars to me though. <laughs> he got bars to me. 
Come on, let me see what you got. No, I'm gonna Just let, give it to I'm me. I'm going to let Red go Carl first. Ready. I see Carl. He over there ready. I'm going to let Red go first. <laughs> go ahead, Red. I'm going to do the Denies and the Laura Hill joint. If I rule the world. Yes. Mm. I'm going to put that one at y'all. Uh, That's hot. Yeah, we're going to give Q a chance to, uh, you know, re re you know, revive himself. Y'all ready? Okay. Mm -hmm. Bobby Brown and Whitney Houston. We got, we got something in common. <laughs> hey, Bobby got bars. Bobby got bars, man. Bobby do have bars. Bobby. <laughs> That's my joint. I wonder, what, the, what did they have that was in common? I wonder. That's what, hey. Love. Love. There you go. I'll give y'all give one more. Uh, Mariah and ODB. Nah, yeah, that's hot. That was hot. That was hot, too. That was a hot one. What about that Mob Deep and 112? Mm. Yeah. Hey, Love. I forgot about that one. With, uh, with Ron Isley, too, was on that album. Yo, I think he, it was, was on that album, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I know exactly the other one you talk about, too. I just can't think of the name of that joint. Hmm. But yeah, yeah, Ronald Rodgers was on that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Caught me off guard with that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you on the homework. <laughs> uh, I just kept thinking on Alvin. You know me, uh, Red. You know how I, how I am. I like those collabos. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go back and kind of look at some of my stuff as far as what you said now, as far as uh, collabos like that. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. a lot of collabs. I think oftentimes we forget. I mean, to me, I just love, you know, again, our love stories. As people, we have some powerful loves. When we love, we love hard. Whatever we do, we do it with a very um, passionate emotions, no matter what we put our hands to. And when we love, it's, it's a beautiful thing. It's very passionate. And when you put it on music on a, on a dope beat with some bars and a, some lyrics and tight voice, it's just everything. So, definitely. All right. Hey, Quinn, we got anybody in the chat? Let me see. You know, we got the day one always in there. Funny mask, funny mask, Scott Chico. <laughs> <laughs> I check out his clothing line too. Check uh, him out. You know you're always in there. Let's see. He's going over the uh, NFL scores real quick. Yeah, we can run. Yeah, yeah, we can run through that, man. Uh, I'm just gonna go over today's scores. Uh, the Chiefs. Beat the Browns, uh, 22 to 17. They almost lost it. I told you, I still think they're gonna lose. I thought they was gonna lose it tonight, but they didn't. So I was gonna come on here and talk a noise too. The Chiefs would have would have lost. Cause that quarterback got a concussion. He got knocked out the game. Who? Uh, Mahomes. Yeah, that's right. He did, didn't he? Hey, so um, is he hurt? I just think is he, he, he going to come back? Or, uh, he, didn't, he didn't come back in that game. They back up, uh, you know, was able to hold off the other team. So we'll, we'll know something next week, I guess. Carlos, Carlos said he's in here. Carlos? Yeah, he's in here. Shout out to Carlos. I think uh, we haven't had him on here before, but shout out to Carlos. Your first time, you know, viewer, welcome. Ask Carlos who we got winning the Super Bowl. Carlos, who went? Uh, we'll see. Yeah. See if he takes it back and see. Let me see who else is up there. What'd he say? Chico said, what'd he do? I think the Bears are going to win the Super Bowl. The who? They ain't even playing all the way. <laughs> they, they, they've been out long time ago. Like, another squad get a shuffle or a joint or a record, the Bears is on forever. They win. They win us forever. The Bears. Hey, Bears team was point though. The Eighty-five Bears were hard though. Nothing like them. Kiska 05. <laughs> 
Man, how many people we got on there? We got get turned up, huh? We got a nice little. Get your reading glasses on, Quinn. Over there. Yeah. Hey, hey, and I went to go get them the other day, right? They told me that I needed something. So I got to go get me some frames, man. My reading is on. That's what happens. Mm. Man. When you get up there in the age. Nothing, nothing wrong with getting over there. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Chico, Chico be taking over the chat, though. He all, he all up through there. Hey, man, when you going to get Chico his shirt, man? We need to uh, send. So need, you working on it? What size you wear, Chico? We send him a shirt. Medium. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing, Chico. <laughs> He's like a person. Cold shot. So that was, was that the only football team that played tonight? I mean, crying minds want to know. Um, yeah, let's see. Bills played yesterday against the Ravens. They won 17-3. Hey, so it's the Bills and... Um, the Chiefs. But that depended on if mm-hmm. Mahomes is going to be back, right? Probably so. So what's but it looking like? What's it looking like for the Super Bowl? What's it looking like then? It's only what? So we already got the other two teams. Is that other game? AFC. So is that other game still long? Or is it even on? Yeah, Saints is up six zero against the Bucks. Still quarter one. So uh, Packers. I think the Packers. Man, I kind of like the Packers winning the Super Bowl. Don't ask me why, but the Packers. Yeah. I'm shutting the show down, man. <laughs> so you How can y'all say the Packers? That's your squad. That's who you running. You running with your squad. That's your squad, Red. Hey, my. Looking at what's what's in front of me. Look, man. I think they can beat either Tampa Bay or the Flames. They should be able to. If they heard. They at least get to the Super Bowl. If they heard you say that in Philly, they'll be mad at you, baby. Hey, I'm just doing my job. I'm just competing right now. That's all I'm doing. None of my teams are not in the playoffs. Hey, man, so. I was looking the other day. The Philly only won four games. <laughs> Philly, y'all, uh, y'all only won four games, bro. Look, the Bears made it in before we did. <laughs> the Bears made it in. Salute to y'all, you know, but yeah, how do- I can't say nothing else. I mean, salute the football, period. I mean, I just love it. Just thick dudes in that kind of feel with silky tight pants on, just looking like horses, just gambling. I just like thickness everywhere. Thickness here, thickness there. I don't care what color you're wearing. Woo. How was those Chicago Bulls ever change on subject? How was those Chicago Bulls growing up in Chicago? <laughs> <laughs> you said what? So what was it like watching the Chicago Bulls? What was that experience like growing up watching them win all the championships? I mean, it was just everything. It was everything. Like, I, there's no words for it. If you didn't experience it, if you weren't there, I just, there's no word. There's literally no words for it. The energy of the city, just the pride right. it felt, just Jordan all day long. I mean, just the whole, there is nothing, there is and will never be nothing like that 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 moment in time when it came to basketball, I feel like I mean, just hands down, just nothing like it. I mean, nothing like it. Pride, pride, pride to this day. It don't matter. Bulls all day, bears all day. Hey, did you like <laughs> did you like BJ Armstrong? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> now Craig Hodges was my favorite. <laughs> Hey, BJ was hard, man. Y'all didn't like BJ? It was cool. You might have asked if she liked John Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, but you know, um, Craig Hodges. You remember Craig, Hodges? you remember Craig Hodges? Yeah. His wife was, that, was our uh, Craig yeah. Hodges when I was in elementary school. Shout out Jefferson Elementary School. Um, I think it's closed. I heard it was closed now, which is crazy. So much stuff is, so many things are changing, but... She was our uh, library teacher. She was our librarian, our library teacher oh. when I was in the Oh, school. yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Kurt Hodges was nice. <laughs> he had game. He was a bull. Yeah, he was a bull. He, was, he won the three-point contest a couple of times, didn't he? Mm-hmm. 
he was an activist too, also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He I still, yeah, yeah. He still is an activist. Yeah, yeah. I like Go Craig ahead. Hodges. Go ahead. No, nah, I was just saying I like Craig Hodges. Okay. All right, man. It's time uh, for the Who You Got segment. Who you got? We're going to put Cynthia in the hot seat here. This is this is going to be a hard one for you. You want you want to spill a surprise to her? You want me to do it? Oh, Lord. Who I got? Now, go ahead. Who is it? Uh, me and uh, Quinn had to do like a little huddle. <laughs> we had to do some last minute changes before uh, this... Uh, <laughs> The show. So who you got? R. Uh, Kelly or uh, Keith Sweat? Ooh. Damn. Um. Last forever. <laughs> hey, but no, but listen, even though, even though, you know, R. Kelly was in his little trouble, he, you know, he's still going to, uh, yeah. So we just quickly do all this. Um. this shit. I'm gonna have to go and definitely um it may seem like a juicy uh juicy contradiction like a, hey, but a Keith Starburst, right? hard though. But I'm gonna have to say, um, even though I am a protector of children, I promise this don't judge me, but R. Kelly all day for me. But definitely Keith Sweat was my mama's joint. Like that man, mm. she loves some Keith Sweat. Yeah, I mean, I just remember joint. That. <laughs> I don't remember her playing a lot of secular music, right. you know what I'm saying? But definitely Keith Sweat was one of those joints. Like when I hear it, I just be like, Okay, she's somewhere around because she definitely is in the air. Cause when he come on and get to that moaning and groaning and begging, you come Keith. Um, Keith is cold, man. <laughs> I like Keith. Uh, I have to say, um, who, I'm with R. Kelly though. R. Kelly, hands down, remix king, just love yeah. Kelly. You know what I'm saying? Stepping, just he just everything put his hands to. Uh, I said everything he put his hands to. Not everything, <laughs> but everything he put his hands to was who <laughs> was my. Edit that part, my boy. Gotta edit that. This is it. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah. I was like, Oops. Ooh, okay. Yeah, I saw y'all had uh, Rico Wright on the show not too long ago. I watched that show. It's a very um very dope show. It was very cool having him on there. What he's doing with Black Wall Street and the art galleries and all that. That was definitely very dope. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, Rico is definitely a good brother, man. That's definitely a good. Yeah, he's brother. one of my colleagues in education. I met him in the education field. Definitely, um, yeah, definitely dope. Yeah, having him on there. Absolutely, man. All right, uh, can you have any more questions? I'm gonna ask probably one more before we go to health and tips. Go ahead, brother. Uh, what do you where do you see? Um, I guess what are your goals five years from now, from now for yourself and restorative mindset? Hmm. Where do you see it evolving to in the next four or five years? I know it's kind of hard to just. Hmm. Um, I think, actually, I think um, during this time of the pandemic yeah, and education, education changing so drastically, um, when it hit and it, when I say it shook at the education world, it shook the education world. But the thing about that is the education world needed to be shook. Um, it's time for the education world to be broke down and built back up. And I think COVID gave us the platform to do that now. Are the people who are in the right place are going to have the courage to step out and do what needs to be done to be innovative and to break the system and to break the tradition of education that was not set or meant for us or our children? Um, I don't know. But definitely, if I have to say in five years, I want restorative mindset to be a part of that movement. I want restorative mindset and, and what I do um, to definitely be a part of uh shaking things up a little bit it's time for things to get shooken up hands down especially when it comes to our babies um it's time for for things to change and um so definitely in that i think during this time of the pandemic i think parents have been putting a different um predicaments right parents have now really had to shift right we've had to choose between our kids education and our kids health um i think it shouldn't be a choice i mean i think it should be a choice, but I think the way it's set up now is like we're either kind of like the choice is being taken from us. It's we're putting these situations to do again what 
the system is telling us is what's best for our children. And for me as a parent, I don't need anybody telling me what's best for my children. And I want a choice. And I think in this space, I would like restorative mindset to be part of that, uh, that choice. And so in this space, even with my own kids, I've been supporting um, my own children and the children of like my family members, like my village, I call my village. Um, during this time, I've been in a space when I've been able to stay home and really foster distance learning in this space. So I would definitely want to be a resource for other parents. Um, Cause what has happened is even when schools reopened when they did reopen for a little bit, um, there were parents who made the choice to still keep their kids at home, not because they had it all together, not because they figured out how to do education at home, but because they made the choice for safety and they chose safety of their children first. So definitely to be a part of a, a resource for parents to help them. Like, this is the things you can do. This is how you can set up a routine at home. This is what it looks like. I know the school is saying you have to do this, but let's really look at the schedule. So really being a resource for parents to help them really um, be able to grab hold and make distance learning work for them at home if that's their choice so definitely want to be a part of that let me ask you and real again, quick um uh-huh. where you like during this pandemic stuff were y'all able to do anything like online with, with them with the kids or anything um i mean we did everything online with the kids oh, did y'all okay. i mean everything everything pushed to online i think um in that space i think the system tried to put mandates and expectation on parents that were just not realistic when it came to um, what should be done in education. I do think that was a great time for us to really focus on um, relationship building, our kids' social growth, self-awareness, tapping our kids, having conversations with our children about what's going on in the world. I mean, at their level, right? But I think having those conversations with them, getting their input, um, really being able to pour into our children and, again, giving them the space um, to, to show us who they are so we can know how to show up for them and what, what they need in this space. Um, but definitely everything went online. And that was just unfortunate because, again, that goes back to that what I was saying earlier um, about even where I'm at now in my career of shifting. Definitely visiting equality versus um, equity, right? That wasn't equitable for everybody, right, to go into some... We shut schools down with the fact that there are a group of kids that come to school that their parents bring them to school for the simple fact that they know that for those hours that they're in school they will be fed and they will be safe they will be warm and they will be cared for and some there are children and families who use schools just for that and we took we didn't take that into account and we just shut schools down Mm -hmm. um that wasn't equitable all kids don't have access to the internet all kids don't have access to an adult that's home to help facilitate that Right. If kids are at home all day, their parents got to go to work. They have to go to work. You got kids. I mean, real life. You when I grew up, I was young. My mother had to work two jobs. I was home young with my little brother and sister. There is no way a 10 year old or nine year old can can facilitate their own education as well as their possible, you know, sibling under them. And I wouldn't even put that on a high schooler in this space. I mean, it's so unknown. But yet we were putting families and children in situations for what? You know what I mean? It just, it makes no sense. They should have um, so, they handed us some, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of laptops to all the kids. That would have, you know, I made mean, it a little bit better. got there, they did that, but still, in, in the sense of it, I think for me, just working in education, it was so, it was to me was how we shifted and we just automatically, instead of taking a step back and saying, wow, this is new, there is no there's no system. This is new for everybody. So there was nothing that was done before that we can rely on and say, oh, let's pull from that. We, we had a chance to create everything new. And what we did was we created the same stupid ass system that we had in the building. We created it online. And that was even worse for our children, especially our children that are at most high risk in our lower property areas. Um, and so um, definitely, again, if you ask me in five years, hopefully in five years, my voice um the platform that I'm given, um, the doors that open for me, I'm going to use it to use my voice to be- to speak up, to bring awareness to this space um, for our children and our communities. Point blank, our parents, advocating for our parents who don't always know what to say or how to say, mm-hmm. definitely show up in the space for them too, helping them to find their voice. That's all a part of social emotional learning is being self-aware being able to know your voice, to know how to use your voice in the space, to know how to advocate for yourself and the things that you care for, instilling that in our parents, instilling that in our children. 
one thing about social emotional learning I want to say is so interesting because a lot of those things that you know I'm talking about when it comes to like self awareness, relationship building, um, personal responsibility, you know, taking accountability for your BS, you know, mm. those type of things. We don't wait to teach children math. We don't wait and say, oh, they have algebra. Let's teach them math now because now they have algebra. We begin to teach them math, you know, with, you know, one and one and blocks and numbers because we foresee that they're going to need it for algebra. So for me, it's like, why wait until our children are adults and now they have to kind of like find therapy or figure out how to, you know, deal with everything that's happened to me. We'll wait for a problem to manifest. Instead, why don't we just see what it is and why don't we begin to instill these things and grow these things in our children, just the same way, same way we do with academics, but we begin to grow those things in them young, making them self-aware, helping them understand their voice. Yeah, even at five, helping a five-year-old understand how to advocate for themselves, helping third graders to know how to have a conversation with a teacher and to that might be some pushback. How do you do that appropriately, right? Let them know it's okay. Um, that their voice, I always told the kids, your voice is powerful. Yeah. Your voice has meaning and it should be heard, right? And Absolutely. it's just a point of teaching them how to use it. But too often, what do we do? Instead of teaching them how to use their voice when they use it inappropriately because their kids they don't know how, they're just trying to stand up for themselves, what do we do? We suspend them for school instead of saying, uh, come here, let's check this out. Well, now, what were you trying to say? What point were you trying to make? Okay, let me tell you how to do that correctly because your voice should be heard. I understand what you're trying to say, so let me teach you how to do that the right way. That's how it should be done, opposed to how it's being done. Right. Drop, Drop mic. mic. <laughs> <laughs> I already knew that was coming. So uh, with that being with that being said, I think you kind of already asked answer what I'm about to ask you, but I'm gonna ask you to kind of like. Uh, I guess simplify this. Mm -hmm. So, like, what are some, um, I guess, essential steps? Maybe give us five of them that for parents, students that are at home or in school, how can they benefit from social emotional learning? Just like some simple things, tasks, or just if you could dumb it down to where, you know, maybe they might be overthinking this and that, how can they navigate through that and apply social emotional learning, if that makes sense? Yes. Um, okay. So in that space, I'm going to speak to, I'm going to speak to the adults. I'm going to speak to parents because I definitely believe that children don't do as we say, um, they do as we do. Right. So first and foremost, I believe it's important for us to model for our children, um, those things that we really want to grow and we really want to manifest in our children. So for adults, I would say, um, a couple of key things. Um, I think it's important to be self-reflective. Um, and I always use this, I always say to thy own self be true. So it's in that space that you're in that mirror with yourself. Nobody knows, it's just you and you. So being truly reflective on on yourself, like who you are, what you bring to the space, um, I think that's very important. I think um, personal responsibility um, is important, um, being able to take accountability, um, even with our kids. I think oftentimes as parents, we don't do that, right? It's just like we make, you know, and it's it's a hard thing. It's a humbling thing. But sometimes you mess up. And being able to say to your kid, hey, my bad, or I messed up, naming that. Like, I messed up. Now watch me. And now show them how you can take accountability. And then now you know better, you do better. And you model that for them. So I think personal responsibility, so taking those moments to be mindful, understanding when you drop the ball and being okay with that for yourself. So giving yourself grace. Um, in those spaces, because remember, your kids are watching. If it's not your kids, I always feel like whether or not you have children or not, as adults, it's our responsibility to our children as a village, as the adults of our village, whether they belong to us um, by blood or not, we are still responsible. We are the giants that of the shoulders that they're going to have to stand on. So it's being those giants. And in order to be those giants, these are things that we can do. Um, and last, I think definitely taking time to be present. We move so fast and things are happening so quickly and so fast and we get caught up in in either we're thinking about everything that we should have, would have, could have, or we get caught up and lost in like the future of planning that we miss the present of the presence. And I think that that's important to be present, to really take time um, in that space. And it doesn't take time. It don't take no dong and make, you know, all that crazy stuff. It, it doesn't have to be that, you know, complex. It's just simply 
committing and being having discipline enough to spend even five minutes a day in just the presence of the day, right? Because how can you even plan for a future if you don't even know what's going on in the present, what's going on in front of you? And, and at the end of the day, I think that's one of the most important things um, in this space, especially during this time um, with everything that's going on in the world, everything that's going on, you know, at the Capitol. I mean, just all the things that's been transparent. And I think definitely being present, taking that time to be self-reflective, um, understanding who you are, being okay with your feelings, embracing them, take, throwing away what you don't want, embracing what's, what your strengths are, and then one day at a time, one step at a time. And that's it. Mm. Well said. Oh, well, you got a quote for us? A quote. Well, my answer was... <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't have, um, I have many uh, uh, personal quotes, but I think um, if I can leave today with just some words of inspiration, for me, um, I'm definitely going to, these, so these great words were written. Um, these are some of my favorite words, and these are words that I stand on. And it says, these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But of the greatest of these is love. And um, that was written by uh, St. Paul, the Apostle. Um, and definitely I stand on that because I think the world in its state, in the world the way it is, it makes us feel that love is weak, that to show compassion and to be empathetic towards people, to really have a heart or uh, like a love for humanity, the, lo the word itself, it seems like a weak word or, you know, and it makes us feel that way that we don't want... But the truth of the matter is, of the all of it, I, like I said earlier, I believe love is the greatest energy that we have on this earth. And when we can embrace that, when we can walk in love, when we can self-love ourselves, that we can self-love others, we can have relationships, and then we can begin to move the things that need to be moved. But if we don't do it with love, everything will crumble, definitely. So for me, it's that. It's definitely that. So... All right, we got we got a uh, we got a check question. <laughs> Who's your top five educators? <laughs> My top five educators. <laughs> Who answered that? Okay, coming from, coming from day Ms. one, she go. Miss Trump, Miss Bernard, <laughs> Miss. Hold on, Bennett. wait, 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 wait. Start over. We can, this is number one. Miss Crump. Okay. Miss Bernardsdale. Miss Bennett, King Four, repping Cottage Grove. Those are my Bennett, middle school teachers. Southside. Um, those are three um, powerful teachers um, that I had in my life. Um, I wanna, I wanna say. Hmm. I got two more. Top mm -hmm. five educators. Dang, they just so influ. Those, those. Those three right there have changed my life, definitely. Um, dang, I'm stumped. I ain't got five for you off the top of my head. I'm a processor, so that would take me a little bit time to think a little bit longer. But, uh, what about Al Sharpton? Got, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but I'll give it. Um, I'll give Tupac some. I'll, I'll throw him in there as, as an educator. Definitely throw him in there as an educator. Okay. <laughs> I can't stand him right now. <laughs> uh, you talking about when he had the jumpsuit, hey, the windbreaker? Hey. Uh, when he had the windbreaker jumpsuit. I like, uh, I like Big Al. <laughs> Big Al. Big Al. Hey. That, that was the homie. Little Al got a little beside it, though. Him and Don King was running the streets. Listen. <laughs> And they, and they got the music. They got a cold pine, though, for real. One of the best. Um, but yeah. two more. You come on. You still got two more. Uh, um, probably Michelle Hamilton. She was a master teacher of mine here um, in Tulsa, okay. actually. Um, definitely, uh, again, just a very influential person in my life and the way she moved with children, the way she moved with education, the way she integrated um just different levels of uh, learning styles and multiple pathways of learning. Um, and then, of course, last but not least, I'm going to say 
myself. <laughs> hey, if I don't throw me out there, who will? Throw <laughs> yourself some love. That's right. Yeah. All right. That's what's up. That's what's up. Who asked that question? Chico B. Chico. Chico. Yeah. <laughs> Chico. <laughs> So let me ask you guys a question. So um, tell me, what was, if you can name one or two teachers um, in your, just throughout your life, maybe that had an influence on you, whether it was a coach, whether it was a teacher, or just any adult, really, what adult really influenced your life um, in a way, in a positive aspect, whether it was career-driven or personal-driven? Hey, I would just like to know. Hey, hey check this out, though. We know B. Al. <laughs> now, go ahead. I'm going to let Ray go first. Go ahead, Ray. And then tell me why. What, what made them just somebody that stands out in your life? I, I only can give you one person at this point. Uh, yeah. Probably my... Uh, I think I was in maybe second or third grade, Miss Powers from Wood, not from Woods, but from Springdale. Because I didn't like school for like a long time. She kind of just made it fun, you know, made me want to just keep going. But I think it would be her. She could know who I'm talking about, Miss Powers. So that's for that, Miss Powers. Yeah. Was that, was that a, I know you're a Tulsa native, so that's a school in Tulsa. What school was that at? Now, that's off of Lewis, Pine Lewis. It's still open to this day. I was think I want to say she Springdale Elementary. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't she might still be teaching. But uh that's that's one teacher that first that comes to mind that I could think of, Miss Powers. And maybe I'm trying to think of let me see. Middle school. Middle school. Yeah, I'm gonna have to come back to you on that one. Okay, what about you, DJ Quinn? Hey man, <clears throat> I'm gonna say one teacher probably named Mr. Regal. Mr. Regal. Yeah, Mr. Regal. What grade was that? This was when I was in uh, elementary school. He was at Walt Whitman. Mm. This is back in the days when they paddle kids. Oh yeah, we all come from that. <laughs> hey, Mr. Wall. Oh, yeah. Hey, Mr. Mr. Wall. With me, gave me my hardest paddle. That that's when I respected him. That's when I knew he was. <laughs> <laughs> it was a wake so up why call. did that? Why was that one? Why does that one teacher still stick out to you after all these years? Because hey, I knew he wasn't playing. <laughs> <laughs> I knew he wasn't playing. We used to keep it real. <laughs> Is that what it was? Hey, he wasn't playing. He was, Keeping the real hands on. When he was speaking, you need to listen. Not is well, you, that, you know. So that was our Mr. La Mr. Lawrence, and that was in yeah. middle school, boy. He was a beast with the paddle. Hey, can you believe they used to hey. do that back in the day, though? Mm -hmm. Deborah Brown still does it, though. Mm-hmm. Mm. But you know that's not ours, and I often tell kids that, like, right? We want to raise our children. Like I tell the kids all the time, like, so you're telling me that unless somebody's standing next to you with a belt, you're not gonna make a right choice. So I don't want, you know, mm -hmm. and I want them to think about that because I don't want them to grow up to be adults that figure if somebody is not gonna put their hands on you. That means that you you can't make a choice that's best for yourself. And so to me, again, I feel like that's something that wasn't that was given to us, hey, and that's not something that's really ours. But you know, I don't want to say if it's either if it's real, right or wrong. You know what I'm saying? Um, I didn't. I just said it wasn't given to us. What you embrace is what you embrace. No, absolutely. You know? I I just you know just because I know how when you know what I came from. You know what I'm saying? As a young kid. So. That's what you needed. You needed somebody to go upside your head for you to make you know, good choices. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I, I'm saying, so. But you know, we gotta we gotta change that narrative for our kids, right? right? Because no, that, what that relates to now, it doesn't look good, right? Like you don't need the police upside your head for you to make a better choice. You don't need we gotta, the threat, listen, the threat we, of violence upon you for you to make a better choice, and that's the goal, right? To to help, and the hope is to, yeah. again, um, let go of some of those ways that were given to us. Um, Absolutely, and bring something different. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. You know, I, I just do. 
Na hát... Na hát... You need all the social emotional adult learning, don't you? We gonna have a whole course just for you, bro. Go ahead and give him a pamphlet. <laughs> <laughs> Sign him up. Yeah, you said. You said, you said. Oh, yeah. um, you can always um, hit me up on Instagram at cint76. Um, that's cint76. You can hit me up on Instagram. You can hit me up on Facebook on Restorative Mindset um, on um, Facebook. Um, and those are two places that I put a lot of, if you're more curious about social emotional learning, if you're more curious about what I do, um, and just just want to know more um, about uh, my passion for um, this current space of education. I definitely post a lot of resources, um, a lot of positive quotes, um, just a lot of positivity um, things again to embrace those things of self reflection. Um, you said this is Facebook or uh, Instagram? Instagram. I have Instagram and, and Facebook. What's the uh, what's the hashtag? Hashtag yeah. on what? Uh, to your Instagram, what is it at? Is at C I N T seven six. Okay. C I N T seven six. Mhm. And Facebook is just Restorative Mindset. Okay. But what about what can I get some cupcakes for? You said where can what? I get some? Where can I get some cupcakes? You gotta talk about that. Cupcakes? Hold on, <laughs> wait a minute. What is this? Yes. What cupcakes? So I do. I mean, I'm yeah, I bake cupcakes. Um, you got what? <laughs> so my mom, for real, for yeah, real? So, yeah, so nine okay. years ago, um, it'll be nine years, so eight years, it just passed. Um, Eight years ago, um, my mom passed away unexpectedly on mm. Thanksgiving morning. Um, and one that. of the ways that I was self-aware, I understood my sadness ran very deep. Um, definitely was unexpected, and again, the sadness just ran ran deep. She was the reason why we came, we ended up in Tulsa from Chicago in the first place. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that just helped me to cope with that was just baking. And so I just started baking cupcakes and I would take them to the school at that at that time uh, where I was working. And uh, I was just taking them to the school and give them to the teachers. I would bake and just give it to the teachers. And one time the teacher was like, these are good. Like bake me some for my kids. Um, birthday or something i'm like okay and then she paid me and then i was like you don't have to pay me she's like no these are good and then i just i don't know i just started youtube and different techniques and i just started making cupcakes and so um now I, and i used to like go to little uh before covid what they you look find me at, like, do you like do the icing too on the top yeah they're pretty dope i, I give it what I they taste say, like, like they taste like heaven, so I heard. Mm. Um, I don't eat cupcakes no more because I'd be cupcake out. But definitely, I have a cupcake on um, page. You can check it out if you want to see it, and you know, you got put the velvet, red velvet. Mm. Yeah, that's my son's favorite. That's uh, Red's favorite too. Hey, yep. <laughs> I'll be ordering tomorrow. And uh, that's <laughs> Eve Heart Cupcakes. So if you want to check that out on Instagram, E B E. S Heart Cupcakes. Um, and so That's check the website. That um, that is my Instagram. Oh yeah, send that. Send cupcakes. Red. Um, send that to me. That um, the address to her cupcake spot. Okay, I guess that's you. just a side gig, you know. No, but you made that's cool. Make cupcakes. Before COVID, you can find me in the little um, spoken word joints, you know what I'm saying, like Juice Maker or, you know what I'm saying, where they do spoken word, um, have a close associate with um, written Quincy. And so definitely used to um, rock with it um, and sell cupcakes and do little um, cupcake uh, promos and things like that there. So, but now that COVID said, you know, I don't really go to many places. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's cool though, cupcakes. Yeah, I'm on that. Red velvet. I got a push Huh? I got a plug. Um, my merch is 35% off. Promo code is 918 Tussle C O Tussle Code. So you got until Tuesday, 35% off everything. I don't care if you, if you get a sticker, coffee mug, or a that. toothpick. Everything is 35% off. Check this out. We got, Check two, out the merch. When we get two picks. <laughs> two picks. Yeah. 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 Ye
Right. We got two picks. I'm just saying. Uh, I said one to win. Hey, I didn't know we had two picks. I'm gonna give you some of them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I really don't have like two picks. I just I can pack them out freestyle real quick. I just threw that in there. You know. We're gonna have to get some two picks though. Yeah, we might have to get into that. I'm sorry, they got two picks, son. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely, So it's just, it's just cupcakes? That's. Yeah, I don't do cakes. I can't quite get my cakes to, like, they just be crook. I can't quite get the cake thing they're, down. They're it's not really my thing. But definitely um, cupcakes, I'll be rocking with them. I do all kind of cupcakes. Like, um, yeah, definitely... I like chicken and waffle cupcakes, pancake and bacon cupcakes. There's all kind of cupcakes on there. Yeah. Um, from decorations to flavor. So check it out. Put an order in, people. She put and her ankle in. They're all baked. And they're all baked with love. There you go. Because we know that's the most powerful energy there is on this earth. Absolutely. <laughs> I think that is it, fam. Well, thank you guys for having me on the show. Um, I definitely am humbled um, that you guys would ask me to um, come on the show and definitely to speak about uh, education and the work that I do. So I thank you guys for having me. No, we appreciate you coming through, man, and, and um, hanging out with us and um, letting us know what you do. What's your um, What's your Instagram again? <laughs> For the cupcakes, man. You. No, I'm just oh. saying. Just in case I didn't hear. E B E E R cupcakes. All right, and then the C. My mom's name was Evelyn. They called her E, so it's Eve's heart cupcakes. Eve's heart cupcakes, and then the C I N T. Seven six. Yes. Seven six. <laughs> Get that off your shoulders. Make sure. <laughs> Straighten that out. <laughs> uh, he's gonna be on your proof radio for like the next fifteen minutes. Man, <laughs> it's Instagram at what seventy nine? We seventy six. I just say. I want to make sure I right. Elevation. <laughs> Look at that elevation going on. <laughs> <laughs> Local. <laughs> yeah, it's wild. Yeah, oh, listen. Okay. No, for real though. Thank you, man. We appreciate you coming through. Mm. No doubt. Thank you guys. Definitely supporting you guys. Definitely love what you're doing. Um, man, we got to build each other up, right? Absolutely. We out there. Yep. Build each other up. Definitely. So, anything else, man? Nah, man. We just cooling and we out. Peace. Yep. See you next Sunday. Bye. Bye.